All right, I'm going to show the tracing of our t-shirt pattern. And now this is the Ellie and Mac straight fit basic tee. It's the most basic of t-shirts that I can find. It's a unisex pattern that fits just like a Hanes type t-shirt. And so it's just a good intro project when you're getting started sewing with knits. But I wanted to explain a few things about the pattern. First of all, as I record this, our school has no colored ink. So what I have done is I have looked at the measurement chart, which is what you will already have done before you get to this step as well. And you'll figure out what size that you are going to need to trace out. So hopefully by the time it comes to that, we will have had ink and your pattern will be in color where you just have to find the colored line. What I did beforehand is I just took a marker, and so you might do this too on the actual pattern, the one we're tracing. I outlined the size I need just so it's easier for me to see, because I was worried that if I was just trying to look at these gray or black lines, then it might be hard for me to see it. On this particular pattern, the basic, straight fit basic tee, it gives you one pattern piece for both your front bodice and your back bodice. So what I did, I've already gone ahead and traced the front out. So all I did is I lined my tracing paper and this will just save you so much time later is by lining the straight edge of my tracing paper up with the straight line of my pattern. It'll save me a bunch of time. And then I just took a marker. You could use a pen, pencil, whatever and you're going to be tracing around your pattern piece. And for the front, I'm gonna follow this lower curve around the front neck. And if you'll see back here, it might be kind of hard to see, but there's another second line that's the same color or the same dashes, and it's the back, it's the back. So the back's gonna come up higher on the neck and the front's gonna scoop down a little bit. So on this pattern, when I was tracing it, I drew in this line. This is the lengthen or shorten line. This pattern was actually drafted for someone who is five foot 10 inches. And so that's actually quite tall compared to most patterns that are drafted to someone who's five feet five inches. So this line is gonna help us later. We will be able to cut on this line and reduce the length of the shirt by however much you want. I know some of you probably like shirts that are a little shorter. You will be able to do that, but you'll wanna draw this line in. And then this line down here we need, this is just the bottom of the shirt. Now I've gone ahead and labeled it. I want it to say front, cut one on fold, and I made sure I drew in my fold lines. I'm gonna say cut on fold. And remember, when we're actually cutting out our fabric, we're not actually cutting on the fold. We'll cut around it and it will open up and be twice the size. So what I need to do, I can either, depending on which side you're tracing, I can flip my tracing paper around and lay it back on that same piece, and I see that they intersect. Looks like the only one who will be able to do that is if you are tracing an extra small. An extra small would fit two side by side, but the small, which I'm doing, will not. So here's the top of my shirt that I've already traced. I'm just gonna unroll my tracing paper, line the edge up with the side, and then I'm gonna show you how I traced it. So I'm at the cut for the, the back. I go straight across at the shoulder. I curve around the underarm. And then I do a straight. So anytime I have a straight line, I like to use a ruler, it's just faster. Okay, so I'm gonna do a straight line here up to the underarm. I'm gonna do a straight across here. This was my cut line where I can lengthen or shorten. And then I'm going to do a straight line here at the bottom. Okay, I'm also going to mark my fold right here. I'm gonna say, oh, oops, I'm gonna say this is a size small and I'm doing the back cut one on fold. Okay, so this way I know what pattern this is later on if I go to use it again. 
Then I'm going to take my pattern piece and again, depending on the size of pattern that you're cutting out, mine is going to be just fine. I'm gonna turn my pattern or my tracing paper around and I'm just gonna kinda tear it off because I don't need the roll anymore. But now I have to trace out my sleeve. So this is a sleeve pattern where half of the sleeve, it's like it's folded in half when you cut it out. So it's also gonna be cut on the fold. So again, I'm gonna line up the edge of my tracing paper with the edge of the pattern where it says cut on the fold. And then I'm gonna trace around it in my size. So this is the part that meets under the arm. And this goes over the arm and over the shoulder. And then this goes down. This is not quite a straight line, so I'm not gonna use a ruler for this. It goes at an angle. But then when I get to these next places, I'm gonna mark it. Now, technically, you are just gonna be choosing which sleeve length you want. This is for a short sleeved, just regular t-shirt. Down here, this is where we will lengthen or shorten our sleeve if needed. And then down here is a line if we are making a long sleeve shirt with a cuff, okay? So then the only other thing I need to do is on this side right here, I'm marking that this is the fold. I'm just gonna say fold. And I am going to label this as a sleeve. And I need to cut two on fold. And then I also want to label these because I may not remember that later. Short sleeve. And then uh, lengthen, shorten line. Okay? So that is it. Now I'm going to take my paper scissors and I'm gonna cut out around my three pattern pieces. And do me a favor, also write your name on here because we're all gonna have the same pattern pieces laying around the room and we're all gonna be using the same fabric. So this will just kinda make sure that we don't lose everything. So label all your pieces, cut them out with paper scissors and then we'll move on to the cutting out the fabric. A quick little reference point for you if you're looking at the full size pattern, you might notice that there's a couple more pattern pieces that I didn't have you cut out. One is the long sleeve cuff. Man, I can't get that on there. There we go. The long sleeve cuff is right here. And so I will kind of guide you through that later if you end up using it. So if you need the long sleeve cuff pattern, same process. You're just tracing the rectangle in the correct size and labeling it. But what I think I'm gonna do for the class is I'm gonna cut out your neckbands for you, each of you. And so I will cut out the width of your fabric and then you will let me know what size you're doing and I'll have a chart in here just to know how long to cut them. So you do not need to worry about the neckband. Now, if you decide you wanna make the same shirt again, then you definitely could go ahead and trace out the neckband and the long sleeve cuff if you wanna use the pattern again and then it'd be, it would be yours forever. Um, but for in class, just to save us time and just to make sure we have these really super straight cuts, on the neckband, I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and cut those out for you, okay? So, if you do a quick inventory of your pieces, what you should have is a sleeve and a front and back bodice, and you wanna make sure that on your front and back bodice, you've labeled it front or back, and that on your back one, it has the higher neck, on your front, it has the lower neck. All right, so if you are not 5'10", then you are going to use this line on your front and back bodice pieces to increase the length or decrease the length. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut right on this line. And I'm going to measure a half inch per inch of a discrepancy in my height versus the um, where this was drafted. So this pattern was drafted for someone who is five foot 10 inches. I am five foot six inches. So there is a four inch difference. So a half inch per inch difference is a total of two inches. So I am gonna mark two inches 
down on here. Okay, and I'm just using this ruler that has a two inch mark on it, but you can figure out a way to do two inches. And I can either fold, if I think I might use this pattern again for someone else who is a different height than me, I could just fold on that line or cut it off, but then I'm going to reattach it right here, okay? So let's say I was going to, maybe I'm taller than 5'10". I do the same thing. I increase, um, I cut right there, and then I would, when I'm laying out my pattern, I can put a space of an inch or two, however much I need to add um, when I'm cutting out the pattern. But for the shortening it, which is probably what most of you will have to do, this is all we're doing. So I could tape that back together right there, okay? So it's just shortened the bodice by two inches. Now whatever I do on this one, I will go back and I will repeat also on my um, other bodice piece. And then if you're doing the long sleeve, you can also do it. This line right here is your length and shorten line for your sleeve, because um, you may end up with really long sleeves if you're a petite person. So you would again, just cut right here and remove a couple inches of the length of the sleeve if you're doing that long sleeve option. So when cutting out a knit pattern, you are often going to uh, do an alternative method of laying out your fabric. So how it comes off of the bolt is just like our woven fabric with the selvage edge lined up. And I can really clearly tell what the selvage is on this particular fabric. Um, if you have any trouble with that, let me know. But this is clearly the selvage. Um, when I pull on it, it curls to the front. And up here is the cut edge. Down here is the other cut edge. So I've just got a yard of fabric. What I'm going to do, this is different from when we did the woven. I'm going to take my fabric and open it all the way up. So now I've got a single layer of fabric. Here's the selvage in my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it the selvage in just far enough so that I can fit my pattern piece on, on there right there. But here's the deal, that doesn't fit, so I need to do it a little wider, okay? So this is gonna vary from student to student based on your size, and we will just lay that pattern piece right on the fold on the side that says cut on fold. And then we will be using um, some pattern weights to weigh down the pattern before we cut it. I just like to use these little terracotta planters for my pattern weights, but you can actually go out and purchase specific pattern weights. I've seen people use soup cans or veggies in a can. Um, really anything that's going to weigh down the pattern and prevent it from shifting around. And so you just have those pattern weights put in place. And again, we want to make sure here is our selvage because our grain line is going this way. Our stretch, our maximum stretch is going across, but we've got to look for that selvage right here. Okay. So, um, once you have that done, then you're going to leave your fabric laying flat on a surface, either on the table or on the floor, wherever you're cutting and you're just gonna trim right along. You don't wanna leave any space between what you're cutting and the pattern piece. Okay, so we're just gonna cut right along there. Now this piece is for my front, so I am going to, um, it's gonna have that slightly lower cut in the front neckline than would the back piece, but otherwise they're the exact same piece. Okay, you might wanna switch sides, but for filming purposes, I'm just kind of curving around the arm um, right there and then straight down this side. Okay, so next, once I have that cut, I am going to take my pattern weights and just kind of stack them off over to the side. And then I'm going to, just for now, this is temporary, we're gonna label our pieces later, but right now I'm just gonna fold it up inside of my pattern piece and set that off to the side. Then I'm gonna take my shears and I am going to trim off that little bit right there, okay? 
And now I'm gonna take, so these little tails are scraps. Now I'm gonna take the fabric again and I'm gonna open it, fold it over again this time long enough to fit my second bodice piece. This was the back bodice. And I needed to shorten that two inches. Hadn't done that yet. Okay, so same thing. We lay that right on the fold as close as you can. So we don't want to have any waste of materials. So I'm going to just lay my pattern weights down and then I'm going to cut out around this piece as well. You'll wanna take a little bit more time. I am just trying to speed through it, but you get the idea. Okay, so we are cutting out our front, then our back. This back piece again has the higher neck. So just a crew neck t-shirt. And then I'll cut straight across here. Now, depending on your size, some of you may end up with more than just the yard of fabric in order to get all your pieces cut out. So um, we will just have to adjust that based on what size you're making. Okay, so I've got that piece cut out. I'm gonna fold it. Just with my pattern piece folded up inside of it. And then I'm gonna trim as I go, cutting off these little extras. And then last, I'm gonna fold this piece in half one more time. Okay, and this is for my sleeve. Now what I'm doing is just a short sleeve. So I took my long pattern for the long sleeve shirt and I just folded it up in itself and I'm just leaving it with the um, short sleeve line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. I would say if you have any size larger than a small, you're going to need more than a um, yard of fabric especially if you're doing a long sleeve. So here is my piece laying out. I'm just gonna cut straight across here and then trim out around my pattern piece. And this is one sleeve. It's done on the fold, so it looks like half a sleeve, but it'll open up and be one full sleeve. And then once you are done cutting it, we'll just take off the pattern weights I'm gonna sit this sleeve apart or over off to the side. So that's what it'll look like when you've opened it up. But I'm gonna do a second one. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this little scrap that I have, bring it up, place the um, pattern on the, the fold. Again, I don't wanna use the selvage in what I'm cutting. So I'm gonna get it real close here to the fold, cut it, and then I'm done. So the rest of the pieces, now if you are doing a long sleeve shirt that you want cuffed uh, sleeves, then I will be cutting the cuffs out for you. I've got a ribbed knit that will go on the cuffs and along the neckband, and I'm cutting out everybody's neckband piece for you. So you'll just have to let me know what size you're making so that we know the length of the piece that you're gonna need for your neckband, okay? But quick inventory, we've got two sleeve pieces we've got one back bodice one front bodice and then that is everything you need all right this next step is required for this project but is something that i don't always do when i am sewing but what you want to do with a solid colored fabric when it doesn't have a print is you wanna make sure that you know for sure which is the right side of the fabric and which is the wrong. And there is a difference in how it looks. So this is my front piece. I'm just gonna fold up the pattern piece and set it off to the side. Keep your pattern pieces. You do not wanna throw those away. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my fabric and two ways, it may be hard to see in the video, but two ways to tell which is the right or which is the wrong. The right side, let's see if we zoom in, you can see more of a ribbing on the right side of your fabric. I can see parallel rib lines running all the way across the fabric. So that is a way of knowing that it is the right side because on the wrong side, it just looks like a little bit smoother and flatter and you kind of see a little bit more horizontal line going through there, okay? But the other way for you to know 
is if you give the edge, the cut edge, a little tug, and you watch how it curls. So it's wrapping this way. Fabric on the cut edge, knit fabrics on the cut edge are gonna curl towards the wrong, right side of the fabric, towards the right side. So I tug it, it gives a little curl, it starts to spiral up toward the right side. So what I would like for you to do is I would like you to take a piece of paper and you are going to put your name. So I am going to put make new. I'm gonna say this is the front and this is the right side. Okay, and the reason I don't normally do this is because I just kind of pay attention as I'm sewing, but for you guys, we are all doing black or white shirts. They're all gonna look very similar, and the fabric itself has no print, so this way we can kind of um, just keep things identified. So you'll do this with all your pieces. You will figure out which is right or wrong, put your name, the piece name, back, front, or sleeve, I guess you'll do that four times total because you'll have four pieces. And then uh, you'll talk whether talk about whether it is the right or the wrong side. And I would recommend putting that tag on the right side for this project, just so that you can always be looking for that when you're placing your pieces right sides together. One thing I'm gonna do real quick before we move on with the sewing part is I'm gonna take my sleeve piece and fold it in half and then I'm gonna take a pin or a clip, probably a clip, just so that you don't accidentally take a pin over to the serger, but I'm gonna clip right at the fold. So I know exactly where the center of the sleeve is gonna be. So right sides together, fold it in half, mark that very center point, okay? And that is just gonna be helpful when you're pinning those in place. So once you have all your pieces labeled, then we are gonna do some prep steps to uh, get ready for sewing. So first I'm gonna take my neckband piece. These are two inch wide neckbands. So that's a little bit wide compared to what you see on some other patterns, um, but it'll be a great practice for us learning how to install a neckband. The way that we'll put this in is gonna be really, really common for lots of different styles of shirts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this right sides together. So my tag that's right here, I'm gonna fold that over and I'm just gonna pull my ends together, matching up the ends so we have right sides together. This short little end, I'm just gonna use a clip or two just to hold it in place until I go to the serger. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm going to take my front and back bodice pieces. That's the only other ones that I need right now. So I'm going to take the, um, let's see, let's start with the back bodice. I'm gonna put it right side up. How do I know it's right side up? I see that little tag. Then I'm gonna look for my uh, front. I see the tag, right side's touching. So those two little tags should be touching each other. That way we know we have the laying right sides together. Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to lay my two shoulder seams right on top of each other. Okay, just matching up that shoulder, kind of smooth out. Now, do I need to worry that this neck band doesn't match up perfectly? No, because one's lower, one's higher. We did that on purpose. Same with the sides. You're not gonna worry about any other spot of your project right now except the shoulders. We wanna make sure those shoulders are matched up. Okay. All right, so now we have those ready to surge. So we'll go to the serger. We're gonna surge, and it's a quarter inch seam throughout this whole entire project. So you're really not even trimming very much off at all, just a little bit, just to kind of enough to straighten it out. But we are gonna just surge across this, across this, and across the neck band. I'm gonna start with my uh, neck band piece. I'm just actually gonna take my clips off, but if you wanna leave one on down here just to keep it secure, I am going to then uh, raise up my presser foot. I'm just gonna slide the fabric right next to the blade and surge. Okay, then I'm not even gonna stop. See, that's all surged up. I am going to go right into my shoulder seams. The only reason I'm doing that where I'm not cutting it loose and making a serger tail is just so that I'm saving serger thread. So I'm gonna go in with my next piece. I'm gonna lift up that presser foot 
and I'm just even right with that metal throat plate edge. So it is trimming off a tiny bit, but not much. Okay, I'm done with that little shoulder, and then I'm gonna go into the next shoulder. So I didn't cut loose or anything, I'm just doing one right after the next. And then I'm done and can cut my tail. All right, so now we're just going to take the sewing shears and trim apart the pieces. So now I have my neck band piece with the end sewn. I'm just gonna throw away that little serger tail. I'm gonna trim off the end of the shoulder seam, trim the little tail that was between the two shoulders and this other end, okay? Now I am going to open up the fabric so that it is the, of the front and back I'm gonna open it up at the shoulder so that it is right side up. So we see those two tags again. We want them right side facing up. And then I need my sleeve pieces. I can just do one at a time or I can do them both. It's really up to you. Um, if it's your first time ever sewing in a sleeve, you might just do one at a time just to get, get it right and then do it the second time. But this little curve right here is called the arm's eye. And that is just the underarm area. Right here and here is where it, it meets right under your arm. But this area all in here is called the arm's eye. So I'm gonna take my one of my sleeves, it doesn't matter which because they're identical, and I'm gonna look for that label that I put on there that says right side, okay? So I want right sides touching, so I have my right sides up. I'm gonna lay my other tag straight down, right sides together. And right where that little clip is, that's the direct center of my sleeve, I'm gonna clip that to the shoulder seam. So I'm gonna clip right there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sleeve and clip it down all the way down to the end of the arm's eye. So you kinda just have to manipulate it and curve it around a bit. But our goal is for it to be evenly pulled all the way down. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that this seam ends up at the very end of the arm's eye that'll be under the armpit. So I clip right there, and I'll probably put in one or two more clips on this side, just so they match up really nice and neat, okay? And then now, but I've only done half of my sleeve, so then I need to kind of move back over here this is where we're, our pattern's not gonna be laying flat anymore, okay? It's gonna start to curve on us because our shirt has dimension. It's not, just not a flat object. So now I've lined up clear over here under this armpit, at the arm's eye, and then I'm going to clip in between that end of the arm's eye and that shoulder point. And you just really wanna take your time and make sure that your pieces are lined up really straight and even. That'll make things go better for you when you're serging. It would not be a terrible idea for you to have me check this step. So once you have your um, sleeve pinned into the arm's eye, uh, go ahead and have me come over and we will double check everything is right. Now, the next step is going to be to serge. Guys, you've used the serger before. You know how it is. You can't undo it once you've done it. So you've gotta make sure that everything's lined up and um, that you take your time, okay? We don't wanna sew through anything other than the layers that we're looking for. So right now I've got the two layers. I've got my sleeve and my arm's eye and I'm serging and I'm going to double check that there's nothing in the way under there. Um, a common mistake would be to allow part of the shirt to get stuck underneath. And I know a couple of you might have done that when you were um, practice serging on the skirt. We just don't wanna do that. Just be very careful. I'm just serging through these two layers. Also, you wanna make sure you're staying right on the edge and that you're catching both, both layers of the fabric. So I've got the sleeve and the arm's eye that I'm surging through both layers right now. Take your time. Remove the clip before you get to it and then take a break at each clip so you can make sure the fabric is smoothed out. You don't have anything in the way. 
that you're only going through those two layers. So I'm not gonna show the second sleeve because you can just rewind the video and rewatch if you need to. But what we should have now is a sleeve installed, right sides together, okay? So we'll just take the shirt back over to the cutting table or wherever you're laying yours out. And remember you want it right side up so that the right side of the sleeve can touch the right side of the shirt. If you have questions about how to do that, just rewind the video about two and a half minutes and you'll get back to where you need to be. We just came off of the serger, so I've just surged around here. Those are my serger um, stitches, and then I'm just gonna trim off the tails. And we've done that with both sides. So you'll wanna double check and make sure that you have no errors or things that you need to fix, because if you need to fix something, like if you had a hole or you missed, it's a lot easier to fix it right now than it would be after the next step. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to be um, grabbing at the shoulder seam. And so this is my surged edge, my surged edge on my shoulders. And I'm just gonna pick the shirt up. And now I have right sides touching. So my tags are still on there, right sides touching. And I am going to clip my t-shirt along the sides at three places to start with. So I'm gonna start on one side. And the places I want to clip are at the very bottom. So I'm going to make sure the bottom of my shirt matches. I'm going to clip right under the armpit. And we want those to match up perfect. And then I'm also going to clip right at the end of the sleeve. So those three clips are, they need to stay in place. But what we're going to do next is we will pull a little bit. You probably shouldn't have to pull too much, but you clip between the clips, kind of like when we were doing quarter points. So I'm just going to clip along the side, but I am going to leave that underarm clip intact. Okay, so I just need to clip, clip, clip along here. making sure it matches up across the edge, the edge of my, my cut edge where I use my scissors. I wanna make sure it's straight right across there, okay? So then from, so I have clipped from the bottom to the arm, underarm, and then now from the underarm to the end of the sleeve. Now, if you did a long sleeved, you're gonna have a whole bunch more clipping to do, but th that's what we're looking for. So it's clipped, and then I repeat that on the other side, so right sides together, clip at the end of the sleeve, clip at the underarm. I wanna trim that tail off real quick. And clip at the very bottom of my shirt. And then I'm gonna go back off camera and clip in between. So I'm gonna get both sides clipped all the way down the side, under the arm and down the side. All right, so what we should have now is clips all the way down and clips all the way down. If you haven't double checked or triple checked, these should be right sides together. And what I should see are my serger seams around my arm and the shoulders. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we are sewing this right sides together, right sides touching. I want you to think back to when you were surging the U shape on your pants and how instead of surging it like a U, we pretended like it was straight, we fed it into the serger straight. We're gonna do the same thing with the underarm. So even though this has a kind of like upside down L shape to it, we are gonna surge it like it's straight, okay? so. We'll start out at the very end of the sleeve. I'm gonna have to take that clip out, but just make sure those ends match up perfectly. I am going to uh, put it underneath the presser foot. 
I do want to make sure that if you had a pin in here marking your side like your front that that pin is nowhere near where you're going to be surging okay but so I'm going to go ahead and surge along again I'm just marking it or lining it up right with the edge of the throat plate that silver part it's just and so it's trimming off just a tiny tiny bit now as I get to that underarm see how I shifted I moved my fabric I am not turning I'm surging straight so I'm going to remove that clip just right before I get there and I'm serving surging straight over those seams okay the rest of it's just a straight shot down just remove your clips as you go make sure you're only surging through two layers you don't have any wrinkles crinkles or bumps clip in at the bottom just until the very last second and then pull it off okay and then I'll repeat exactly the same thing on the other underarm area we've just finished the construction of the shirt and now we need to go to our neckband piece so I'm gonna go ahead and take the pin and the paper that was labeling it and I'm gonna throw that paper away. But here's my neckband with the seam, the finished seam, so this is right side out. And I am gonna fold it in half with wrong sides touching. So this is opposite what we've said the whole rest of the day. Wrong sides touching. So I'm folding that surged edge onto itself. And then I'm just gonna put a clip in just to kind of hold it in place right there. It's just temporary. I'm basically just folding this whole thing in half with raw edges touching all the way around, but we want it wrong sides together, wrong sides together. When I say raw edges touching, I mean when I fold this and this together, they match up along here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark, uh, do my quarter points. So we've done quarter points already when we um, installed the elastic into our PJs. So what I'm gonna do basically is find the direct center opposite my seam. So that will be my quarter point for the uh, front of the neck. So where my seam is, is the back of the neck. This is the front. And then when I bring those two pieces together, so I'm bringing those clips together where they match in the middle. Then these two ends where my thumbs are, that'll be the other two quarter points. So I'm gonna mark one down here and I just kind of tuck it inside. So it's right at the end. And then this one is gonna be down here. Okay, so I've got my four quarter points four equal parts on the neckband. Okay, I could go press this if I knew my fiber content and that I wasn't gonna melt my fabric. Um, we could just press it just slightly with an iron just to keep that crease in there and keep it folded. I'm gonna set that aside for now. And we're gonna mark our quarter points on the shirt. So I'm gonna start with my back. How do I know what's the back or what is the front? The back is going to be up higher. So right in the back center, where a tag would normally go, I'm gonna put a clip right there. I'm gonna put a clip right in front, center, right in the middle of the neck. And then I'm gonna bring those two clips together and make this sort of a straight line. Line those up. And then I'm gonna stretch this out so it's a straight line. So your two quarter points on the ends are not at the seam. It's a little bit further out than that shoulder seam, okay? So I am going to put a clip right here and then another clip right here. So we've marked our quarter points in our neck and on our band and now all we have to do is match them up. So what I'm doing, I have my shirt still wrong side out. I like to build from the inside or right side 
Um, and that's just how I do it. Different resources will show this done in different ways. Here's how I like to do it. So with my shirt still right side out, I go inside the back neck and I match up with raw edges touching. We do not want the fold of your neck band touching the raw edge because this is gonna, this raw edge is the side that we're gonna serge on. So the folded edge needs to be down and that edge that I had clipped is touching the raw edge or the neck of the shirt. So I'm right in the back center. I'm gonna clip that all together, okay? And just like you did on your elastic of your pants, now I'm gonna go over and put my next two clips together and I'm gonna clip the neckband to the shirt. And then my next clip is the front center. Line those up and I'm gonna clip the front center to the neckband. And then my next one over off to the side. And if you would like help with a partner to do this step, that's fine. Sometimes it is easier to have help. Okay, so then those are our four evenly spaced clips. And then this, with a friend, or if you can do it on your own, I do it on my own, you just stretch to fit your neck band to your shirt. We should not have to stretch the shirt itself at all, but you may have to stretch the neck band. Okay, so back here, I'm gonna stretch just a tad to fit that neck band in place. Over here, now if you notice that one spot you have to stretch a whole bunch more than somewhere else, that probably means you <laughs> marked your quarter points uh, incorrectly. So it should be pretty even all the way around. That is the point of the quarter points is to make sure that you're evenly stretching out the neck band all the way around, okay? So we are done clipping and we're gonna head to the serger to install the neck band. Well, you are almost done. So we have to install the neck band and, neck band and then do our hem. So here we are at the serger and I am going to look for the, the seam on my neck band. And that is where I'm gonna start surging because that's the back center. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out that set of clips and I'm just kind of holding things steady with my fingers. I might need to take out this clip too just so it's not bumping into the presser foot. So here's the deal, with a neck band, we are sur surging on a circle. It's a complete full circle. So there's no start and no stop. We just have to find our way on. So what I do is I slide that whole thing under the presser foot, lower the presser foot down, and I'm just gonna put a few serger stitches in. So now I am on. I am on the project, and now I'm gonna straighten things out. We are just going to um, serge about a quarter of an inch. We, again, are gonna wanna trim just a little bit off so I'm in line with the edge of the presser, or the throat plate but I am going to make sure that I'm getting the two layers of my neck band and only one layer of shirt. Nothing else is in there or no wrinkles or crinkles. So I'm gonna search that little area, take my clip out, I'm gonna reset, just smooth everything out, make sure all three layers are lined up. Surge around and just keep on taking your time Lots and lots of time, don't rush through it. And we'll get back all the way around to where we started. Okay, so as I approach where I first started, where I have the serger tail hanging off, I'm gonna overlap that. I'm gonna intersect those serger stitches. So I'll just go right back over that spot, trimming off just a tiny bit where I didn't trim before. Overlapping those stitches, now I'm not trimming anything. And right at this back seam, I'm gonna overlap and then I'm gonna reach under the presser foot. Move the fabric out of the way, just pulling it out of the way See, there's nothing in front of the presser foot now. Now when I stitch, 
I'm done actually serving. So that's how you get off of the circle. Now I can just trim that up and my neck band has been installed. All right, so this cover stitch machine, if you have not used it before, I'll want you to get out a scrap piece of knit fabric and along one edge, fold it up a inch hem. And then, um, so that's folding it to the wrong side. And I just used a pressing cloth so that I didn't touch the iron directly to the fabric. I used a little bit of steam, but I just want this crease to stay in across here. And then when you go into serge, when you go into cover stitch, you will make sure that your fabric is right side up. So I can't see that folded edge underneath here. It's hidden underneath. Um, I'm gonna have my presser foot up and my needles up, and I'm gonna slide the edge of the fabric up until the side fold meets up with this tape line that I've taped down for you. But basically what that is, is with your two needles, you have a right needle and a left needle. The right needle will be on the hem itself that's folded up in the back. And the left needle will be going through only one layer of uh, fabric. It's on the um, left-hand side of the hem. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the presser foot. And I'm just going to keep my eye over here on this tape line and keeping that folded edge in line with it. So I'm just going to use it just like I would a uh, serger, except for it's not cutting. This is sewing two parallel lines for a hem. This just gives you a nice professional hem that you would not get with a sewing machine. When I get to the end, if I'm just doing a straight line like this, I'm just gonna turn the hand wheel toward me. My needles come up, I raise the presser foot, and then I have my little scissors closed. I'm gonna reach under the presser foot and just pull those threads toward me, and that releases the, um, the thread. So when you look at the back of the hem, I catch right along the edge. Now there are a couple little jagged places right here, but pretty much it is exactly where it needs to be. I didn't miss any spots where I didn't sew. And so that is the hem that we're going to do on the bottom of um, a shirt. And the video that you're seeing here could be used at the bottom of any straight hem. So we're gonna do the same technique for the bottom of our shirt for sleeves or anything, even like a dress or anything that is with knit fabric that has a straight across circular hem. What I have is my t-shirt completed. This could be any shirt. This is just a basic tee and it is a straight across hem. When you have a straight across hem, almost always you're gonna use a one inch hem. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate today. I've just got the bottom of the shirt slid over the ironing board. This is a cotton lycra, so I should be able to iron it, no trouble, but I am gonna use a pressing cloth. So what I'm gonna first do is just measure a one inch from the edge. I've got my seam gauge here. Do not guess on this. You wanna measure. You wanna measure and create that little memory hem that we did in other projects. So I'm gonna lay my pressing cloth down and just press in a crease right there in that one spot. And then I'm just gonna continue rotating the shirt around the ironing board, each time folding up and measuring one inch and pressing in the crease. So that's laying really nicely. I just shift it over, fold it up one inch you can kind of start to eyeball it, but you always want to measure it before you actually put the hem in. If you don't measure it and you just eyeball and guess, when you go over to the cover stitch machine, you're going to have your um, edge of your fabric lined up with a very specific spot on the machine. And if your fabric's not folded right, you might miss some of your hem. This little spot right here that's a little long, I'm just gonna trim that off. 
Okay, so I just keep rotating, folding up an inch, and pressing, and rotate till I get all the way around. If there is one step in the project where you don't want to um, cut corners, it's the hem. You want to make sure that you've measured this. I cannot express that enough. It will save you so much trouble. And why make a really awesome shirt to do a sloppy hem at the end? Um, I don't love hemming. It's not my favorite part of a project by any means, but it is important to make the project look nice. So measuring that one inch, making sure you have a nice crease in there. And this cotton Lycra is really good about holding its crease. So I've got the bottom done, and then I'm also going to press in the sleeves. Now the sleeve hem, I'm just gonna do at half an inch. So I'm gonna fold those up a half inch. And so I'll have a different spot for you to look on the um, machine when you're doing that. But again, I wanna measure it. That was a little too wide, so this needs to be a little narrower. Add my half inch. And again, you'll just do all the way around the sleeve and then repeat that on the second sleeve as well. So press the bottom. Now, if you're doing cuffs on yours, you don't do any kind of hemming on your sleeve. If you're doing cuffs, it's a totally different process. So I'm getting ready for my hem on the bottom of the shirt. So this was my one inch hem. This is where I'm going to keep my eye on the masking tape edge. I had to trim off a little bit of uh, fabric where my two sides didn't meet. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. I just want to make sure that hem is folded to the wrong side, one inch. I'm going to slide it. I'm gonna kind of start near a side seam, but not on a side seam. So I'm gonna slide that under the presser foot. I'm gonna line that folded edge of the fabric up with the um, tape. Drop the presser foot. Now one double check before you get started is your fabric right side up? It should be. If you can see the fold, that is the wrong side, okay? We want it right side up. And so now I'm gonna stitch along. Okay, I'm just keeping the right fold up against this tape. As long as you have pressed your fabric under one inch, you should successfully catch all of the hem the entire way around. Now, if you are on the Brother machine, it operates in exactly the same way as this one, but they thread differently. So you wouldn't really have to worry about that unless you're learning how to thread it, but they operate in the exact same way. When you come to a hem or a side seam, you might have to kind of help it through just a little. Sometimes I want to get stuck there. And just take your time. This cotton lycra wants to curl a little bit and you just have to make sure that it all stays folded under. All right, now here's the trick. When we are coming back near where we started, I'm going to take a second to cut these top two tails. So these were my original two needle tails. I'm gonna cut them really close to the um, fabric. So I'm just trimming those off and I'm gonna reach back here and trim off the back tail. So I've trimmed all my tails. And then, and you do this when you are sewing in a complete circle, which is almost always when you are hemming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep an eye on these two stitches. What I need to do is make sure that my needles come back in line with those two stitches and they overlap perfectly. So I'm gonna kind of slow down as I get back to the start. And what you can do is there's three lines in the middle of your presser foot. You wanna make sure that your stitch lines, your two stitch lines, 
One of them is in line with the little line on the far left of the foot and the other one is in line with the little line on the, on the far right. They're each one eighth of an inch apart and so you want the two outside lines to line up with your um, parallel. And then I'm overlapping. So now I'm back to where I started. I'm overlapping by about an inch. Make sure you're right in line there. Now, once I am done, I'm gonna turn my hand wheel toward me, lifting my needles. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and we are going to hopefully not rip our threads, but I'm gonna pull those needle threads gently out. So they are out in front of the presser foot. I'd like to get them a little longer. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to cut my threads out here and then I grab a hold of the fabric underneath and I give it a little tug, okay? So what I should have then on the back side are three tails. Those are the two needle threads and then the looper from underneath. And I just trim those and I'm done. So I finished the hem. You will wanna look back and make sure that you caught the hem all the way around and you didn't miss any places that need repaired. And now you'll go ahead and do the same process on your sleeve. I'm gonna flip my shirt right side out to do the sleeve. Some of you are done if you are doing the cuffs. So when you're doing your half inch, I'm just gonna line the edge of my um, fold up against, just right outside the edge of the presser foot. I'm gonna take this off. Okay, we just make sure when it's, like, it's laying flat. So I am just about an eighth of an inch outside of the edge of the presser foot. And just keep making sure that it's folded under a half inch like you had pressed it. Since you're not pinning it or holding it in place, you've got to make sure it stays folded under. Okay, just like we did on the bottom hem, now that I'm getting back to my start, I'm going to go ahead and trim those tails, the three tails, the starting tails, and then I'm going to overlap. I'm going to intersect those stitches. And I'm going to do that by about an inch. And then turn the handle toward me, lift my foot, and again, grab a hold of those threads, I'm trying to pull them out in front of, there we go. Then I'm gonna clip and pull the fabric out. So then I should have three threads back here that I trim off, okay? And then we will repeat the same process on the other sleeve. So if you need help, just rewind back and watch that again.